hopefully you guys can see me i'm in my client's room right now she's in the living room and right now she's watching tv and i just wanted to have like a quiet place for now um um since i'm talking about my client sunday will be my actual last day working with her because drum roll please um i had got hired at one of the facilities that i had applied for now remember the other place that i applied for i did not stay with them um which was a good thing <laughs> this facility is like amazing one of the most respected places um for patients and people with orthopedic surgeries as well as um rehab this place is just like one of the top best companies ever the other company that um i was going for they actually had called me i did an um interview and they also want me to do a shadow day in the icu the only thing about that position is is more like i'm going to be a patient care tech more than anything like i'm going to learn um how to do ivs and stuff like that hanging bags and wound care but the way that the um, interview went it's kind of like she was trying to tell me like there might be more days that i might be doing patient care and that does sound like um top notch or all that a bag of chips but I didn't sacrifice 10 months of going to school to be a nurse just to be a patient care tech or a CNA again. And I already been through um, life as both roles. So I might not take on that role, but they did email me back today asking me about what day can I go shadow the unit. So I haven't decided yet because I have orientation um all week in the morning so i gotta kind of like wait and see but that place with the icu like that's like one of the top hospitals in my location so i don't want to turn down that position but at the same time right now where i'm at is it's good and you know they they are the ones that's actually actually giving me my first experience as a gpn eventually turn into an LPN because it's not fair that I'm giving them all this time signing contracts giving them my commitment and then turn around this place wants me as well but this spot is not really giving me the news that I was expecting as um, I want to proceed as working at ICU so so anyways besides that good news um another good news came my diploma finally came. I opened it up when I seen it. And it's crazy because it was like kind of like a little bit open. So I'm like, okay, did a rat bite through this? I don't know. So anyways, what came in there was basically stating um, how we transitioned over to online. And we were one of the largest graduating class that they ever had. And that they had added them to an evening class. And with the evening class, they did Saturday clinicals. And also um, about how happy they are of us and how the faculty, IT, had all came together to make us um, succeed at the end and graduate. So remember the um, diploma holder I had? It's at home, so I don't got that right now. And also my client, she got ants in her room. It's kind of creepy to me. I'm sorry, guys. But anyways, um, the first one is my final grades. So it says, record of Natalie Blair, issue to Natalie Blair. Um, they issue basically the day I graduated, which was um, June 18 and my date of birth. My enrollment date was 8-12-2019. Graduation date, once again, June 18, 2020. So, 
I had got my total clock hours, which was 1,200, but I actually got more. It was like 1,215 or something like that is on my Orban um, account. If you guys got Orban, you already know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what Orban is, it's basically where students can go and check on their clock hours. You might not get your grades on there, like your official grades at all. It might just say 0, 0.00, but um, it basically just gives you like your attendance and your clock hours. But anyways, um, first semester, sorry, that was my sister and my mom on three-way because tomorrow we have in our family um, get together because Mongo Jerome's birthday is tomorrow, which is July um, 19. So we all gonna be over there tomorrow. So anyways, more with the good news. So um, my grades, a and I got an 88.26. So that's like a B plus average um, for practical nursing semester one, including lab and clinical all together. Um, my grade was 84.65. That's like a B average. Um, semester two, and this is practical nursing two and three, but for practical nursing two, and this is including lab and clinical as well, was a 90.71. So that's an A average. And then practical nursing three, and this includes labs and clinical, I got a 99.28, which was an A plus average. And like I said, my clock hours were total 1,200. So this is what it is. I will also um, put like everything on the side in a picture somewhere, whatever. So with that saying, your girl um, got inducted into the Honor Society. So it says Na National Association of Licensed Practical Nurses Incorporation Honor Society Achievement Award presented to Natalie Blair for expillary expillary sorry work in achieving at least a 3.0 GPA in the prescribed course of work during practical nurse education at my school. And this is what it looks like. And then finally, my diploma. So the school I went to, this certifies that Natalie Blair has to the satisfaction of the board of director, director, directors and the faculty completed the prescribed course of instructions and testimony where uh, we had a thick our signatures and the seal of the hospital this 18th day of June, 2020. And this is my diploma. You know, at home I got the actual diploma holder, so I'll be putting that in tonight. But another um, good news is that my ATT number finally came. So I had paid on June, not June, July 3rd. And when I got the email stating that it will take four weeks for me to get my number. But Lord behold, on June, I keep saying June, July 13, I had went to use the bathroom and I had my phone with me. And I looked at my email like around six something in the morning and voila, the right to, um, the right to test came in which is ATTS what stands for and I cried I was praising around the house I was crying whatever and I had went directly to um Pearson View to go and schedule my date I will not tell you what date it is but it is soon and I'm just so excited guys this has been a week of good news and when I do pass my test because I'm calling in existence that will be another um, great news under my belt. So guys, um, soon you will have video of me, um, talking about the NCLEX and how it went. I don't know when that will be, but, um, when I do take the, uh, test, of course I will tell you guys. Um, 
But yes, yeah, so I got my diploma, I got my ATT number, I scheduled my date, and I got my job that um I've been wanting to be at, like the facility. And I'm still gonna think about the other place, but right now I'm just gonna stick with one facility right now. Cause if I do um make ends meet at the other location, I might just do it part time or maybe every other weekend that I'm not working at the facility that I'm at now. That's another thing too, guys, like when you do um, make it to the end of your program, which you will, um, depending on your um, your program, we have um, affiliated with a particular um, company. So that's how we got our GPN spots. So if you have GPN spots, apply for them but also at the same time don't just go with because you can get a spot at a certain facility make sure that you really check into a facility make sure that you know what their ratios are for like the nurse patient how many you know how many patients patients you were taking care of same with um the pay same with um do they have great teamwork and just check into the facility make sure that it's where you really want to be before you actually sign that contract hold on guys sorry guys i just want to give you that advice about choosing the facility if you do get gpn on um, positions through your program at the end because you will hate to sign a contract so i didn't get to finish off the video earlier um I was cut getting phone calls and i had to attend to my client so anyways think hard before you actually sign the contract to work um as a gpn because once you sign a contract a lot of them comes with a lot of um stimulations like the contract um before i applied to this job um i would have got 650 dollars reimbursement from the nclex and also a thousand dollar bonus sign on. Now the trickery behind that is that um, you have to wait maybe I think it said ninety days. You have to wait ninety days actually before you actually see like any of that money. Like the reimbursement you get thirty days I think after you um past the boards and then a thousand dollars sign on 90 days and then if you want to re um how they call it if you want to reinstate your contract you will get another thousand dollars for staying on for another year but the thing about it is, if you try to break the contract, you got to give that money back. But if you don't take no money, it's okay. You're not really breaking the contract. But I just want to let you guys know, just be careful before you actually put your John Hancock on the paper. Like, look really into the position and the job and what they want you to do. Because sometimes they might treat you as an aide and you didn't go to school to be that like there's nothing wrong with that because like i said once again i was an aide and i also was a patient care type but what i'm saying is that you don't want to sign on to something that has nothing to do with your title there's nothing wrong with helping out with a work because you're going to face that no matter if you're iron if you are um MP, whenever it comes to patient care, you still have to help out some way, somehow. But what I'm saying is that you want to be able to learn how to be a nurse. You know, you want to get the skills and everything. You want to get that experience, man. Experience, man. The experience. <laughs> so that's all I'm saying. So that's why when um, the first offer came to me, and everything i was just like no i just don't feel like this is going to be good for me but the second um job that i applied for which i got now 
I feel good, great vibes. It just feels right. And then um, the same thing with the other facility. Um, if I do go shadow, I'm going to see if I can get like a part-time position at that place so I can get like a specialty because ICU will be a specialty under my belt. So if I want to travel a year from now, at least I will have that experience in the ICU. So fingers crossed, you know what's going to go down, but we'll see. But another thing, the reason I picked the first job, and I think it's like everywhere though, it's like it's starting to become a shortage of RNs to train us. And when you see a facility that's getting ran by, you know, LPNs, nurse homes are gonna have a lot of LPNs, but <coughs> when you don't have an RN that's like on standby to actually like be there when emergency situations, there's a lot of things you can't do as LPN, like our scope of practice can only go up so far. And I did not see that in that facility. Even though a couple of my classmates went over there, kudos to them and I'm praying for them. And there's other facilities that some of my classmates went to that, I'm gonna not discuss it right now guys, I don't. But besides all that, um, look into that as well. Make sure that it's safe that as you being a nurse, that you want to make sure that there's an RN that you can um, go to if there's anything going down. Because sometimes it takes a while for a supervisor to come to the unit. So I'm just saying, make sure that you look deep into the facility if you do get GPN offers. And once again, GPN stands for Graduated Practical Nurse. But guys, um, I got some special news to tell you guys. But I'm not going to tell you yet until the next video. So, fingers crossed. Just pray for me. That's all I'm asking for. I'm praying for uh, great news. That's all I'm saying. And then, hopefully, I get to tell you that in the next video. So, fingers crossed. So I'm going to tell you guys. And I will see you in my next video. Love you guys. And... Your girl's doing good, and like I said, still studying for that board, you know? But I don't wanna keep over studying. Like, I feel like I know enough where I have to keep retaining the same info. <laughs> I know that you wanna go in there prepared and everything, but people that took the boards be saying things like, you know, some of the stuff not on the test, even though you don't know how your test's gonna be because it's programmed, but at the same time, you can prepare as much as you can. It's like a test that none of the questions that you actually study is not gonna be in the test. Like all the stuff that you was reading versus like when you do take a test at school, at least you know the material and what um, what topic you're actually going to be taking a test on. So it's like all the units all together in one big shebang, but it's like, where is this test going to go? So, I don't know, guys. So, but anyways, like I said, my next um, vlog, I pray that uh, the next video will be with good news. So, I'm going to leave this video off here. And once again, you guys be safe out here. Um, If you're not taking your NCLEX right now, continue to study. Just stay focused. Um, Let go all distractions if you got to. And just know that um, eventually you'll get those conditions at the end of that name. All right, guys. Peace.